And I, I want to thank you again for your leadership on, on doing this. All, all my colleagues, Mr. President, um, you, the other colleagues we've seen here, your leadership has been outstanding on this. My good friend from Montana. You know, it, it begs the question, why, why have we, the Republican freshman class, really for weeks, for weeks, we have all been coming down to the Senate floor to talk about what's happening here. We've been coming down to the Senate floor to counter the minority leader's decision to filibuster our troops, as Senator Rounds mentioned, six times. There's no other bill in the U.S. Senate since we've become senators that the minority leader wants to focus on and filibuster than the bill that funds our troops. Pretty remarkable. I think it's a disgrace. So we're here because we want to bring attention to this issue. What's happening here? Sometimes it can be confusing. You know, we have the press that sits above the presiding officer's chair there. They watch what's going on. We want them to report this. We want the American people to know what's happening here. Because it doesn't matter where you're from, what state you're in, what party you're, you're affiliated with in terms of politics, if you knew that your senator from your state was filibustering the spending that supports our troops when they're in combat all around the world right now, you'd probably be pretty disappointed. You'd think it's a story that the press would want to write about. But they haven't yet. But we're trying because it's a really important issue. And I believe the American people really care about this issue. That's why we're here. But I'll tell you another reason why we're down here, why we've spent hours and weeks coming down to this floor talking about this issue. Because there's someone else who cares about this issue. It's called the men and women in the United States military. They really care about this issue. Now I know there's this kind of sense in the Senate when these votes are taken at late at night and they're filibusters and procedural issues and I think a lot of my colleagues think that the troops don't know what's going on. And somehow they don't know that the minority leader of the US Senate and his colleagues have been filibustering the funding for their mission and their welfare and their training six times in the last year and a half. But the troops do know this. They know it. They read about it. I guarantee you they're concerned about it. I think in some ways they think it's demoralizing. As Senator Perdue mentioned, it doesn't give the military leadership the chance to plan long term. So Mr. President, another reason we're down here, and you know it, is we need to let our troops know that we have their back. There might be some in this body who think filibustering, sp spending for our troops six times is a policy that they can be supportive of. Again, I don't, I don't, know, I, I don't know why the minority leader is doing this. I certainly don't know why my colleagues on the other side are blindly following him. But we need to be down here to let the troops know when they watch this and they hear about this and it confuses them that we have their back, that we don't think this is appropriate. Now yesterday, a number of us when we were down here, we talked about what we are asking, what the President, what the Secretary of Defense, what our generals are asking our men and women in military and in in uniform to do. And they're all over the world keeping us safe in Iraq, in Syria, in the South China Sea, in Europe. In many of the initiatives uh, undertaken by the president in terms of our troops in these places, many of us are supportive of. But this is a lot that they're responsible for. They're doing so much. And you come back to this body, what is this body doing? Filibustering spending for our troops. They're certainly doing their job. It's time the minority leader lets them, let's let us do our job to fund them. 
So just recently, Mr. President, all the different things they're supposed to be doing, we learned about something new that they might be doing. The men and women of the United States military might possibly soon be conducting joint airstrikes and sharing intelligence with the Russians in a deal negotiated by Secretary Kerry recently. Now, there was a New York Times article today that makes it clear that our military leaders are very, very skeptical of this deal. So it's another thing that we might be asking them to do, share intelligence and, joint, and conduct joint operations with a country that we shouldn't be trusting, particularly in terms of military terms. Here's a quote from the New York Times today. The result of this deal, potentially, which by the way, the State Department has not allowed us to see yet. The terms of it, we haven't been able to see. Kind of sounds like that other deal that Secretary Kerry negotiated, the Iran nuclear deal. The result is at a time when the United States and Russia are at their most combative posture since the end of the Cold War, the American military is suddenly being told that it may, in just a week, have to start sharing intelligence with one of its biggest adversaries to jointly target Islamic State and Nusra Front forces in Syria. This is General Philip Breedlove, the recent NATO commander, very, very well respected general who just stepped down. Quote, I remain skeptical, skeptical about anything to do with the Russians. There are a lot of concerns about putting us out there with this kind of agreement. So that's again, Mr. President, what we might be asking our military to be doing soon. And yet, we're not gonna fund them. The Washington Post today in an editorial titled, Either Way Mr. Putin Wins about this deal made it clear that this is clearly a deal that's not in our interest. And yet that's what our military might be asked to do. And we won't fund them. And the minority leader continues to filibuster them. Mr. President, one of the things that we've been asking our colleagues on the other side of the aisle is to come down here and explain why you are doing this. Why? For weeks, six times in a year, year and a half. Why? Now, to the senator from Illinois' credit, yesterday, he actually did come down here. Senator Durbin did. We kind of had to because we moved on a unanimous consent request to move this funding forward, so somebody actually had to come down and say no and do a little explaining, but at least he did. But for those of you who saw it, the explanation fell way short. It was kind of DC, mumbo jumbo, process, bureaucraties. It was not convincing at all, at all. So it'd be good if they could come down and explain it a little better than the senator from Illinois, but at least he gave it a shot. But here's what we know. Here's what we know. We need to fund our troops now. They're working so hard for us. It's the right thing to do. The American people want it, our troops need it, and it's the solemn responsibility of our duties here in the United States Senate. So Senator Daines, I wanna thank you again for your leadership on this. This is a critically important issue, regardless of whether the media picks it up, and we're gonna to continue to highlight it because it is an outrage that the number one bill filibustered by the minority leader in the last year and a half in the United States Senate is the bill to fund our troops. It's an outrage. Thanks again for your leadership.